Today I want to talk to you guys about how I do some of my research for finding dividend paying equities. So one of the very first things that I do when I find a new ticker that I'm interested in is I want to actually research the company behind it. So let's do that very first. I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to search for the ticker and see if I can get some information about the company. So the ticker we're looking at today is FTN Financial. So it comes up immediately on Google Finance. It shows uh, what the price is, $10.43. And down here we can see there's two links, Financial 15 and QuadraVest. I actually already have a position with QuadraVest. So I'm just going to go to the QuadraVest site and look at it. It's got home, all products, about QuadraVest. Let's look at about QuadraVest. If I didn't know this company, I would start to look through this. I would see who the team was, who these people are, what the background is, who's on the board of directors, how long they've been around. You know, it was formed in 1997. Laura Johnson was one of the founding partners and she's still with it. Managed 14 billion in assets. This company currently trades over $2 billion in assets. Board of directors, Wayne Finch, Wayne Finch, Laura Johnson. So these board of directors are the team. This is a three-person company. And then they have an independent review committee. Great. You know, those are basic things we need to know, just who we're dealing with. Then we look at our products. In this particular case, they've got a bunch of different ones. I already own Canadian Bank Corp. You know, just check out what, what their site looks like. Fund features. Here's the holdings. This is telling you what they invest in. Banks, which is why I invest in this. You guys have probably seen my video investing in banks, not their products. Well, this is a great way to invest in banks. This is a, essentially a mutual fund that's been managed and they sell covered calls on the stocks that they purchase. So it's actively managed and it pays a, a regular dividend. It's not what I was looking for today. Today I wanted to look at Financial 15 Split Corp. Fund features, click on that. Core holdings. So this is both Canadian and American stocks. And this company in particular, I know what they do. They buy stocks in these companies, then they sell covered calls, which is an option play, which allows them to generate more income off of the bank stocks going up. And banks make a lot of money, so the stocks go up. It's two different types of shares. There's preferred shares and there's class A shares. And then we can see what the difference is. Now, I know that the preferred shares on this are paying a 5.2% um, dividend. That's not quite in my threshold. The monthly cash dividends, the class A shares, let's see how much they actually are. If we go to distributions, December 29th, we paid 12 cents. Let's go to our easy calculator and find out what that return is. Punch in those numbers, $10.43. Okay, now let's look at the fund documents. This is always interesting. Like what, what's actually available here? We've got a latest annual report, semi-annual report, quarterly portfolio disclosure, class A shares for tax information and preferred shares. So they've got a lot of stuff. Really, it's annual report that we wanna look at. We can look for some numbers. So we can see here's the holdings, they're describing their preferred shares versus their class A shares. It's got a set rate, 5.2% annually, and the class A shares have a to be determined cash distribution. And we know that this is paying like almost a 15% return. They're talking about their distributions. Really, I wanna get down to the meat of this. I wanna know what their assets were, what their revenue and expenses were. And this is per share. So we're talking about a $10 share and their assets per share were $16. So they own more per unit than the unit value. Total revenue, 52 cents. Total expenses, 20 cents. So total increase from operations, this is per share. So on a $10 share, they're making $2. They're making about 20%. And then they distribute some of that money. So they distribute $1.68 back to the shareholders in distributions after they've made $2.09. They're actually paying out $2.03, which means that they're paying out almost all of their income which is great for the investor. That's what we want. We don't want them to pay out more than their income, but we want them to pay out almost all of their profits back to us. So $2.03 compared to $2.09, that's six cents per share buffer. That's not a huge buffer. They're paying almost all, everything out. Management fees, 0.65%. Annual compound performance. I never really care about like one year, three year, five year. I want to look at like 10 years. I want to see like how much over time has it made because this is inclusive of the major corrections. So 4.5% and that's in the last 10 years. And we know that the start of this 10 year period was a correction year. Since inception, it's returning 7.85% for these class A, 5.37% for the preferred. And 5.83. Then we can see like what the market indexes did in the same time frame. So the S&P 500 did a 2.86% return and the TSX financial index, which is the Toronto Stock Exchange banking sector, 
returned 10.49%. So they're actually below what the industry average is. Let's see, here's the weighting of the portfolio. It tells you exactly how many percent of these 15 different shares they own. If you're looking like they own 7.1% in Sun Life Financial. Portfolio breakdown, this is important. I mean, this is 58% Canadian banks and 41% US banks. Assets and liabilities for the company. We're looking at $314 million. That's what their investments were worth in November of 2016. Then they have $16 million cash sitting around and they total assets of $332 million. Liabilities, they've got some written options, but only a million dollars worth, which is great. That's a nice low number. There's 19 million shares and they're worth $10 each. So that's the 190 million that they owe for the preferred shares, which w when they come to term, they'll be worth $10 each that the, the preferred shares we get paid out for. Yeah, you can see that right here. Here's the $10 preferred share. You know, management fees, service fees, and this is redeemable class A shares. So $136 million in net assets. And now you can go through and look at this in detail, but I've kind of gone through enough for, for my liking. I, I'm looking at this. This company has a lot of cash. I have a position that I have in BK already with this company. And I'm thinking that a 15% dividend return is pretty nice. Me personally, I'm gonna make this a buy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let's get rich together.